Wendy, good job on enduring all this. He said he would take responsibility and marry because of it. Despite knowing that I was dating him and we were engaged, she brazenly stole him away. And when they told me about the pregnancy, I had no choice but to step back, didn't I? At that time, my fiancé had said he would take responsibility and marry me. But hearing that made me feel like I had fallen into hell in that instant. I truly believed in both him and Jessica. After marrying, Jessica continued to approach me. I don't even want to see her face anymore. But she keeps coming up with reasons to do so, which I can't handle. And then, an invitation to the wedding came. When I was stunned looking at the invitation, the couple, my eldest son and his wife, noticed and said something unexpected. I'll go with my wife. We'll make a scene. Both of them nodded with confidence, so they must have some plan. On the wedding day, I saw a scene I could never have imagined. I am Wendy Clarkson, a nursery school teacher turning 50 this year. I live with my husband Dan. Dan and I have a son, Kevin, who recently got married. Kevin moved out of our house to live with his bride, Samantha, in the next town over, following their marriage. It seems they are enjoying living together, which as a parent makes me very happy. That's because I didn't have very good memories associated with marriage myself. In high school, I dated Aaron, a classmate. We quickly grew close after discovering we both liked a somewhat obscure band at the time. Afterward, I went to junior college to get my nursery school teacher certification. And he went to university, but we continued to date and even promised to marry. However, I failed to notice the dark shadow looming over our marriage plans. Hey, Wendy. Are you listening? Ah. Uh. Sorry, sorry. What? Jeez. Just listen. The other day at work. She is Jessica Collins. Her demeanor changed suddenly after started working. I got hit on by a client the other day. It was so hard to say no. It's because you're cute, Jessica. How many times have you been hit on this year alone? Huh, I guess I've been asked out on dates by clients. Or business contacts about 30 times. Jessica's casual behavior felt like something out of a drama starring a famous actress. You're cute, Jessica. Be careful, okay? I know. You worry too much, Wendy. Since we continued to hang out and have coffee even after graduating high school. She knew about my dating life. Hey, how's your boyfriend? Ronnie is planning to marry me around the time he graduates from university. Oh, and he's supposed to become the president of his family's office supplies company. So he'll be working there as a president trainee after graduation. Then, I noticed a change in Jessica's expression. We were in the same class, but I had no idea he was a scion. I only found out recently too. He doesn't talk much about his family running a business. Then, Jessica looked over cautiously. He doesn't talk much about it, huh? He seemed inconspicuous, but you really can't judge a book by its cover. That's true. Isn't it amazing that he's promised a future as a president? I think I spoke without thinking to Jessica. If we ever have a wedding in the future, I'll invite you, so you have to come. Of course. I won't miss it. However, I had no idea that this chat with my best friend would turn into something unbelievable. I'll never forget it, it was half a year after I turned 21, on a rainy day. Amidst my busy schedule as a nursery school teacher after graduating from junior college, I continued to meet up with Jessica. As usual, Jessica invited me for coffee, and I sat at a windowside seat in a nearby cafe. Looking out the window, I saw a woman walking towards the cafe without an umbrella. It was unmistakably Jessica. Soaking wet, she entered the shop and walked towards me. What happened? Forgot your umbrella? If you had called. 
I would have come to pick you up. Then, Jessica looked at me with a face about to cry. You know, I have something I must tell you today. She hesitated as if unsure whether to speak. I'm pregnant. I knew Jessica was approached by many, but I didn't know she was dating someone specific. Really? When did you have someone you're marrying? Who? Do I know him? Then, Jessica nodded slowly, looking embarrassed. Someone you know. Well? Jessica swallowed hard before revealing something unbelievable. It's Aaron, your boyfriend. This happened. From there, my memory is hazy. The shock was so great that it seems my memory partially faded. So, that means. It seems the baby is a boy. Aaron and his parents are happy because he'll be the successor. Then, Jessica glanced at me, smirked, and said. Wendy, thanks for being calm about this. He said he would take responsibility and marry me. There's a baby in her belly, and Aaron's parents are on board. So, there's no role left for me. Jessica peered into my face and finally said this. For his sake, as well as for his parents and the company. You should think about how to conduct yourself. While saying this, she alternated her gaze between me and the cafe's door. Meaning, she was suggesting I leave quickly. Oh, and don't you dare contact Aaron. Why? Ronnie? This must be some mistake, right? Don't casually call him Ronnie. There's no mistake. Don't say anything unnecessary, or it won't end well. Jessica's face was scarier than I had ever seen. I had no idea she had this side to her. Of course, I won't contact him anymore. I never thought you would do something like this. Good luck with everything. Thanks. See you. Jessica drank her coffee as if nothing had happened. I had no more reason to speak with Jessica, only to leave. I was devastated for a while after being betrayed. By the man I was promised to marry and my best friend. I remember feeling like everything was dark in front of me. I tried to visit him and Jessica several times, but I knew nothing would change if I did. During this lowest point, I met Dan, who was the same age as me, through a friend's introduction. Thanks to Dan, my emotional wounds gradually healed, and we got married when I was 24. Soon after, I got pregnant and gave birth to our son, Kevin. I was filled with life with someone I could trust completely. And I had almost forgotten about my previous boyfriend and Jessica. Around that time, I had Kevin and took maternity leave. I was unsure about returning to work. Nowadays, many people work. But I often hear that it's hard to spend quality time with children due to work. However, considering future uncertainties and Kevin's education expenses, working seemed the better option. I discussed my return to work with my superior. But we concluded that it would be difficult to work properly after my leave. Eventually, I asked the director and my colleagues. And was able to return to full-time work immediately after my maternity leave. It was hard leaving zero-year-old Kevin and returning to work. But it was for the future and just in case anything happened. At 5 p.m., when the children's parents come to pick them up. I mustered one last effort to send the children off at the nursery school. When I spotted a familiar person. That person was walking straight towards the nursery school. The moment I saw her face, I wished I hadn't, but it was too late. Yes, it was Jessica. Long time no see. Still working here, I see. She smirked, sizing me up from head to toe. I hadn't told Jessica about meeting Dan, getting married, and having a child. Out of a desire to never contact her again, I had cut off all communication. Yet, to think Jessica would approach me. Oh, thought we could reconcile? Don't get it twisted. I just happened to pass by here on my way to dinner with Aaron. I felt a slight discomfort with Jessica's words. Dinner? 
Wait, what about the child you were pregnant with? Is your husband coming later? My casual remark visibly shook Jessica. Huh? A child? Stop it. Just stop. Then, Jessica sat down on the spot, covering her ears. I wondered if I had said something terrible. Parents picking up their children were staring at us. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Jessica seemed to be crying. She covered her face, but I could faintly hear her sniffling. The stares from the parents were quite painful. As a nursery school teacher, I've realized how scary rumors can be. A little slip of the tongue can spread among fellow teachers, parents, and even grandparents by the next day. Probably, they think I made some mother cry terribly. The thought gave me a headache. Just after returning from maternity leave, I didn't want any strange rumors making my job difficult. Regardless of my feelings, rumors spread rapidly. Three days after meeting Jessica at the gate, over 90% of those associated with the nursery school were avoiding me. Jessica has always been personable and articulate, so most people took her word as the truth. Because of that, I endured painful glances for a while. I heard from a close colleague that I had been labeled as someone who had cornered a mother of a child at the nursery, to the point where she had no escape and made her cry. My colleague tried to clear my name with those around us, but the pace at which rumors spread was too fast. And with Jessica's convincing act of playing the victim, almost no one believed me. Because of the rumors Jessica spread, the nursery I had been working at before my pregnancy became an uncomfortable place for me. And I decided to resign. It seemed the nursery also found it troublesome to have a staff member around. Whom rumors circulated. When I announced my resignation, it was readily accepted. After resigning, I became fearful of working and secluded myself at home for a while. But I decided to start working again, for Kevin's sake. Although it was uncertain what path Kevin would choose in the future. I wanted to have enough money to support him in whatever he wished to pursue. Of course, there was a possibility that Jessica could suddenly reappear. Spreading baseless rumors and causing trouble. However, I thought I couldn't let that stop me. I worked tirelessly, thinking only of Kevin's future. Dan understood how I felt and said he would do as much as he could taking the initiative in doing household chores as well. Most people would say, don't you have your husband's salary? But I just laughed those comments off. Though we did have Dan's salary, I felt it wasn't enough to secure Kevin's future. Fortunately, I loved my job as a nursery teacher. So I was able to work without problems at a new nursery. However, the thought of Jessica possibly passing by the nursery again sometimes made my heart heavy. I fought my own trauma and worked, managing to save a decent amount of money. Kevin grew up to be not only kind-hearted but also very studious, wanting to help those in distress. He aimed to become a doctor and successfully entered medical school. The tuition for medical school was higher than I had imagined, but it was all for Kevin's future. After undergoing numerous exams and training, Kevin became an obstetrician. He got a job at a well-respected obstetrics and gynecology hospital in the area and dedicates his days to studying to become an even better doctor while providing care to many patients. About a year ago, Kevin married Samantha, whom he had been dating since high school. She is very calm and gentle, yet strong-willed and independent. I was pleased that he married such a wonderful woman. Kevin, who seemed so happy to finally start a family with the woman he loved since high school, occasionally visits the family home. One day, when Kevin and Samantha came to visit, they brought a letter with them. Mom, this letter was in the post, but it's addressed to you, right? The envelope they held appeared to be made of expensive paper. Curious, I took it and an unwelcome name jumped out at me. 
My head started spinning as I saw the name indicating it was a letter from Jessica. Mom, are you okay? Yes, yes, I'm fine. I couldn't let myself collapse and worry Kevin. I gathered my strength and opened the envelope. Inside were an invitation and a letter. It seemed Jessica was getting married. But the man she had snatched from me and married was about 30 years ago. Why would she be having a wedding now? As I wondered, Kevin and Samantha looked on curiously. Oh, isn't this one of those trendy vow renewals? Samantha, who works in the service industry at a restaurant, probably hears various stories. I knew she was knowledgeable about new information. But it made me realize she knew about worlds unknown to me. Vow renewal. What's that? It's like redoing your wedding. Some people do it on significant anniversaries, and it's become popular among celebrities. Hmm, because we couldn't have a proper wedding ceremony at the time. Interesting, I didn't know people did that. I felt disgusted looking at the invitation. How long would she continue to haunt my life? Mom, you look a bit pale, are you sure you're okay? Yes. I'm fine. It's just, this person from a long time ago. It brings back painful memories. Samantha, sensing it was no trivial matter, asked me about it. Is this Mrs. Collins? It's just, it's not a big deal, but it hurts a bit to think about her. It's impossible for someone whose name makes you suffer to be not a big deal. Oh, her name is Mrs. Collins. Samantha looked thoughtful upon seeing Jessica's name. Then, as if on cue, my phone began to ring. The screen displayed an unknown number. The timing, just as I was reminded of Jessica, gave me a bad feeling. Reluctantly, I answered after the persistent ringing. Hello. Um. Hi, it's Jessica. Did you get the invitation? You're coming, right? Even without putting her on speaker, Jessica's shrill voice was clearly audible to Kevin and his wife. Seeing my pale face, Kevin gestured silently, asking who was on the phone. I pointed to the name on the envelope. Then, Kevin wrote something on a piece of paper and showed it to me. It read, say we'll go to the wedding. Yes, I'll go. I knew you'd say that. You want to see your old flame doing well as a company president, don't you? After a series of smug boasts, the call ended. Kevin and Samantha exchanged looks and nodded. My wife and I will take care of it. Samantha also nodded, pointing at the invitation with a smile. I'll make a scene. I had no idea what they planned to do, but it seemed Kevin and Samantha had their own strategy. I decided to leave it to them. On the day of the wedding, Kevin and Samantha attended as my representatives. The venue was famous, often featured on TV and commercials, so it looked familiar. The perfect wedding should be held on a hill overlooking the sea under the shimmering sun. A cheerful catchphrase that stuck in my mind. It was typical of Jessica to choose such a venue. Jessica always needed to be the center of attention, envied by others. So it was expected she'd pick a trendy venue. I had heard that hosting a wedding there could cost nearly $100,000, a favorite among celebrities. Looking up at the sparkling chandeliers and the high ceiling with a spiral staircase. It was obviously an expensive venue. I had a meeting with Samantha in advance. Dan, too, was curious about what a wedding redo in one's 50s would be like. So he ended up watching alongside me. It felt strange watching a small screen together. When the time comes, I'll make a video call so you can watch too, mother. Samantha, dressed up for the occasion, whispered through the camera. Her usual warm smile was as lovely as ever, unchanged even today. I'm sorry to have you go to my place on your day off. And not at all. You always treat me so well. Besides, I thought there must be something serious for you to have such a reaction. Considering you never speak ill of others. Samantha's keen perception was evident, 
likely honed from her experience in customer service. I'll keep the video call going from here on, so please watch, mother. Perhaps sensing something unpleasant, Dan said. I'm going out to buy cigarettes, and left abruptly. Kevin and his wife must have suspected something to show me via video call. Dan has always been perceptive, but his intuition here was impressive. Then, a memory video of Jessica and my ex-boyfriend began. It covered their meeting through a friend. How they quickly had a child together but couldn't keep it for some reason. And how, after a long time, they were finally expecting again. The video mentioned their current happiness, with their child now in middle school and doing well. The child, about to graduate from middle school, was portrayed as energetic. Exceptionally bright, with many friends, leading a fulfilling life. The video and its content were clearly visible to me through Samantha's video call. Leaving me wondering what would happen next. As the host was about to conclude with moving words, Samantha seemed to stand up. The view on the other side of the screen changed dramatically. What a truly wonderful married life you have, and such a fantastic son. You must be from Wendy's family. Yes, that's correct. I'm here on behalf of my mother-in-law, with my husband, Kevin. Kevin appeared briefly at the edge of the camera, giving a small nod. It was impossible to guess what would unfold next. Samantha then began to speak astonishing words. Such a wonderful son, achieving high grades through your tutoring. But shouldn't there be something else he needs to do first? What? What are you suddenly talking about, thought? Jessica looked around frantically, but while the crowd whispered curiously, no one spoke up. Amid the growing buzz in the venue, not just because Samantha's voice carried well, but also because there seemed to be another reason for the disturbance. I work in a restaurant, and I've really had a hard time with your son's behavior. Not teaching him proper manners or common sense, I always thought it was such a pity. Jessica's face turned red upon hearing Samantha's words. Manners and common sense? Of course, I've taught him. What are you implying? Stuffing unfinished food into the corners of the seat. Putting his mouth directly on the condiment bottles. Is it normal for a middle schooler to do such things? It's fine to have fun with friends, but... Stop making baseless accusations. My child would never do such things. Samantha was not intimidated. Are you absolutely certain your child wouldn't do such a thing? After all, you just introduced him as your wonderful son. Recently, he took all the toilet paper from the restroom, which caused quite a hassle. Samantha chuckled, but her eyes were not smiling. Convinced that Jessica would never admit to it, Samantha grabbed a tablet. It seems you've never seen how your child behaves outside. Here's some footage from a security camera. From the tablet, audio played of what seemed to be Jessica's son and his friends messing around apparently trying to chug a bottle of soy sauce. After this, it was quite the ordeal. We had to close the shop and disinfect everything. Middle schoolers should know right from wrong, yet chugging sauce seemed fine to him. Jessica's son wasn't at the wedding. But it was clear he was incredibly inconsiderate and hard to communicate with. That audio is fabricated. Stop making things up there's clearer footage showing his face. Shall I play it here? Realizing Samantha was serious, Jessica fell silent. Well, there's no need to show you here. I've submitted these videos and photos to someone who needs them. What? What do you mean by that? Your son, he's finished his high school entrance exams and chosen a school, right? It was easy to find out since he talked loudly about it at the shop. Jessica's face went pale in an instant. I mentioned it to the school's administration. They said such behavior is unfit for their institution, and some sort of action will likely be taken. You might be getting a call soon. What? Are you threatening me? Stop it right now. 
well, you'll find out soon enough. Maybe you should ask your son for more details. Then, Kevin stood up. Earlier, you mentioned having a pregnancy that didn't lead to birth when you were quite young. It seems that was a long time ago. Jessica looked at Kevin and nodded. Yes, that's right. At 20, I went through a tough pregnancy and couldn't meet my baby. I'd rather not talk about it, it's painful. Kevin noticed her voice getting softer. Strange, there's no record of you being pregnant at that time. What are you talking about? The venue buzzed with whispers growing louder. People were saying there was never a child to begin with. I had a feeling something was off. Conversations like these could be heard clearly. You've been visiting a gynecologist for several years due to some issues, haven't you? According to your medical records, there's no indication you were ever pregnant. How peculiar. The crowd began openly criticizing and denouncing Jessica. I've heard that you chose to marry the man my mother was dating. I've heard it from somewhere. Jessica seemed displeased with Kevin's remark and shouted as if to ignore him. Don't bother with such nonsense. Security, please, remove this person at once. However, no one made a move. Instead, the voices criticizing Jessica grew louder. The attendees whispered among themselves. She married him on the pretext of being pregnant, but was that all a lie? So, the claim of having an heir was also false? It doesn't matter to me whom you marry. However, using pregnancy as a reason. To steal someone away really makes me question your character. Like son, like parent, it seems. A son who takes toilet paper and a parent who takes someone's boyfriend. You're very much alike. Samantha kept the video call going. Allowing us to see Jessica shaking as she faced Kevin and Samantha. The wedding was no longer the focus. Some guests were uploading videos to social media in real time. With comments like, I got a comment. There's a reaction. It's hilarious how many people are watching this. The buzz was especially loud around them. The video uploaded to social media is buzzing with comments about Jessica's pitiable state. The murmurs grew louder, and the looks directed at Jessica became increasingly icy. At a table of her former classmates, people began loudly throwing sarcastic remarks her way. People always said she had a thing for men. I always thought she was bad news. Thinking she could do anything just because she's pretty and then growing up to be this pathetic. Such comments could be heard from all around. Eventually, the wedding turned into a massive expose of Jessica's misdeeds. People freely shared stories about just how awful a person she was. Turning the event from a wedding into a chaotic mess. Aaron watched Jessica being condemned, looking bewildered but didn't say anything to his wife. Treating it almost like it didn't concern him. It was as if he was carefully avoiding touching a sore spot, a strange distance between them. Normally, one would expect some sort of action in defense of his wife. But Aaron seemed to be pretending to be an outsider. It reminded me of when we were dating, he always had this demeanor, a strange nostalgia. Samantha kept the video call going. Occasionally focusing the camera on Jessica's frustrated expression. Watching her make such a face, I realized she could look like that, too. Soon, people gathered around. It seemed many had suffered due to Jessica's actions and behaviors. Sharing stories like, that one time when. She didn't return borrowed money, spread weird rumors, or even made people eat expired snacks. The wedding was anything but a wedding anymore, with people speaking their minds freely. What, do all of you want to ruin my party? People sitting at Jessica's side of the friends' tables left with uncomfortable expressions. It appeared they had been reluctantly invited by Jessica. That's why I didn't want to come. But she insisted, and now look what's happened. Voices could be heard over the video call. 
people continuously left the venue, leaving only a few in the family and friends sections. Then, Samantha spoke to me through the phone screen. It looks like the party is wrapping up. The staff seem to be heading this way. I thought so. From here, it looks like the seats are almost empty. Did you notice? It's hard to believe there were that many people here just a moment ago. Oh, it looks like they're talking to the staff. Saying that, Samantha adjusted the phone's angle. The camera shifted, showing Jessica, Aaron, and a venue staff member. Aaron, once chosen over me by Jessica, was a man I could never forget. No matter how much time passed. We had promised to marry, and during our relationship. I genuinely believed there was no man as wonderful as him. Both his appearance and personality seemed perfect, and I was completely smitten. But now, there's no trace of the man I once admired. He's probably twice his old weight by now, visibly heavier, and with thinning hair. I had heard he took over his father's company. But his current appearance screamed of poor self-management. Ah. Uh. Aaron seems to be discussing something. Look. The phone screen zoomed in on Aaron and the venue staff having a discussion. What are they doing? It looks like most people have already left the wedding. Ah. Suddenly, the screen focused closely on Aaron. He appeared to be prostrating himself, with only the back of his head visible. And all that could be heard was his voice profusely apologizing. About the payment for this ceremony. Could be heard, indicating a dispute over payment. From what I heard from people leaving just now, Aaron's company is on the verge of bankruptcy, and he's borrowed money from all over the place. Is that so? But I saw their advertisements downtown not long ago. I wouldn't have guessed they were struggling financially. It seems all the money went into Jessica's extravagances and their child's tutoring fees. It's a shame, all that investment, and the child still ends up causing trouble in shops. Guests who were taken aback by hearing about Jessica's past actions seemed to have been looking down. But they quickly stood up and hurried silently towards the exit. They probably did so fearing what Jessica might say to them if they were caught. A wedding scattering into disarray before the official conclusion is quite an unusual sight. Struck by a sudden idea, I asked Samantha for a favor. I'm sorry to ask. But could you turn the camera towards that person prostrating? I have something I want to say to him. Yes, I understand. After explaining the situation to the venue staff, Samantha handed the phone to Aaron. I found myself looking directly at Aaron through the screen. It's been a while. Ah. Wendy. It really is Wendy. What have I done? As he spoke, Aaron turned his eyes away from the phone. I was only married to Jessica because she said she was pregnant. I actually wanted to marry you, Wendy. Do you remember our promise? It's not too late, is it? To think you'd start with that. Married because you were made to? You chose this yourself. And you were fooled by such a transparent lie. Did you think I'd feel sorry for you? Aaron stood there, a look of shock on his face. Do you see yourself as a victim? Fooled, you say? Cheating willingly and then using being deceived as an excuse doesn't make any sense, does it? You're as straightforward as ever. That's what I loved about you. I felt a chill. Aaron had always been the type to try to maintain his status as a victim. Failing miserably in his attempts to be cunning. Still living in the past? This so-called party, or wedding? This isn't even a real wedding redo. How long will you be bound by the past? But you loved me enough to want to marry me, didn't you? Could you lend me some money? What era are you talking about? Well, you should probably start thinking about your future. I'm not lending you any money. I ended the call with that. Aaron, on the other end, was probably in shock, 
knowing his character. But that's no concern of mine. After the wedding, Jessica had to start working due to the deferred payment and their inability to manage their living expenses. However, Jessica, who had never really worked, struggled to adapt. Despite her high pride, she constantly complained. She seemed to job hop without ever being of much use, according to the rumors I frequently heard. I heard from an acquaintance that their prideful child's high school admission was revoked. The video of his misconduct had spread causing an uproar not just in the school he was supposed to attend but also online. Which was inevitable. Moreover, Aaron's company seemed to be failing, and every time I passed by, the gloominess around it was more noticeable. It was a case of misfortunes piling up, making me think how troubles come in threes. Albeit from an outsider's perspective. At this time, Jessica started working as a cleaner at the nursery school where I work. Wearing a uniform with the cleaning company's name printed on it, she stood with a sullen face. I disliked even mentioning Jessica's name, deciding to treat her as a stranger. You're the new cleaner starting today, right? Huh? What's with that act? Because of you, I've been through hell. I ignored her provocation and simply stated a fact. I am in charge of the cleaning contractors here. If your work attitude is significantly poor, I will contact the cleaning company. Jessica, realizing the seriousness, closed her mouth, but then loudly made an outrageous claim. I know you're trying to ruin my life. Blaming me for stealing your old fiancé and taking it out on me. As she spoke, she threw the broom she was holding. The moment I saw that, I called the cleaning company, and they informed me she would be fired. It seemed her reputation and cleaning skills were so bad that one more complaint without any sign of remorse would lead to immediate termination. Given her behavior, it was likely the same everywhere. Beyond being appalled, I even felt sorry for her. I continue to work at the nursery school. Since that incident, Jessica has stopped bothering me, and I've been living peacefully. Dan helps out with household chores when I'm busy with work which has been a huge relief. Recently, his cooking skills have improved, making mealtimes even more enjoyable. Then came an exciting call from Kevin. Mom? Can I talk to you for a sec? What is it? You sound happy. Can you tell? Samantha is pregnant. We might have a baby by the end of the year. I was enveloped in indescribable joy. Really? What wonderful news. I was so happy, I had to tell you first. I'm truly happy. Samantha must be experiencing morning sickness around this time. I don't want to trouble her by talking now, so let's celebrate when she feels better. The thought of a baby being born into Kevin's family filled me with excitement. Despite the heartache of having my fiancé stolen by a friend in my youth and nearly giving up on everything. I now live surrounded by wonderful people. This has become my motivation to keep moving forward.